Paul Packham back here. <laughs> For now. <laughs> um, as far as the studio this quarter in, in Neoff, we were looking at the Madison Road corridor as one of the ghosts of Sandy plans for future economic development. And um, the one area that we focused on within studio as far as looking at doing the development that would be in line with Ghost and Steady was the Millicron site of previously uh, manufacturing industry area that they're looking to put in uh, as per the Ghost and Steady plan office, um, some residential and um, retail commercial areas. So it's a mixed use development and that's kind of how we approached the problem with uh, how we might address not only the regional issues but then again looking at Oakley uh, and just north of that where the Millicron site actually is and how we could connect and reconnect this, this site with its surroundings to produce something that's viable for not only a present but future uh, of Oakley. Yeah, and so we actually, the studio concentrated in even further on a stretch of the Madison corridor from Ridge Road to the Red Bank Expressway. So really looking at the connection between Oakley and Madisonville and kind of what lies in between those two right now. And that's sort of what this part of the corridor is, is an in-between space right now. So um, I guess the vision, our vision for, the, for this project, for the development of this part of the corridor really begins at a, at a larger scale, the scale of Cincinnati. Um, we started by identifying all of the industrial brownfield sites throughout the city. Um, and you can see them here on this map. These are just the brownfields mapped out in Cincinnati. And um, you can go to the next slide. And these are sites that are uh, abandoned and often still have warehouses on them. Um, they're unused and sort of just wasted land right now in many cases and so um, not only that they could be they could be making money for the city they could be land that's used for Cincinnati but um, also they're contributing greatly to stormwater runoff so however though at the same time we also consider these sites as uh, a testament to Cincinnati's industrial past sort of um, remnants that call to the foundation that Cincinnati was built on um, so we looked into ways that we could reprogram and reuse these spaces that would um, benefit the city economically, the public, socially, and um, the, well, the area environmentally while still preserving the character and the culture of Cincinnati. So um, at a large scale, we saw this development as a um, prototypical solution for something that could be implemented throughout Cincinnati and eventually improve all of the brownfield sites. Um, it would, you see it as tying them together and also being linked to the existing green space and parks throughout Cincinnati. And um, so yeah, so then we selected this loop, which centers around this Millicon site, as a way to start looking at how to apply these ideas. Uh, and so taking precedent from the Industrial Heritage Trail in Germany, which you can see some images of on the screen, um, we, these linked sites would become landmark destinations or points along a path that would encourage users to stop and spend time there, and then in turn that would define the greater district, which we have shown up here, and you can kind of see how that might play out in other places in the city with a district here or a district here. Um, and so extremely important to our scheme is reuse. But we're actually really interested in a less conventional type of reuse, which treats these abandoned warehouses as um, public landscape that becomes monuments that can be inhibited in a new way and allows for more flexibility and creativity. So um, the connectivity between these sites that we've kind of shown with the dash line here is really going to be realized through um, an enhanced network of pedestrian, vehicular, and public transportation. And as we've talked about before, with Cincinnati being uh, primarily automobile based, uh, we're operating under the principle that this improvement of transportation at all of these levels is going to be the first step in spurring our new development. Um, and so now Paul is going to explain that on the scale of the milk company. Um, right now, that the transportation to the site is mainly particular. And there is um, the Eastern Corridor uh, plan, which Cincinnati currently has in the pipework, which 
basically um, includes a rail line that comes here and uh, intersects Madison right near Brookwood Commons. So there's going to be a proposed uh, stop there along the rail um, at Madison. So that becomes a critical point um, for people coming from the rail line and then accessing the site through Madison um, via bus or pedestrian. It's actually a little bit too far for pedestrian. So one of the things that um, we're proposing along Madison is actually to upgrade the bus system to a, uh, a BRT system. And um, essentially this, this diagram is showing the uh, vehicular access to the site off of 71. And then also uh, there's a new Kennedy connector which will uh, link 71 uh, south to the site and bring people directly in um, along the back side of the site here just behind the Circuit City, or the Circuit City, the uh, Target, and the Myers, and the Sam's Club. Circuit City is no more, of course. Um, but the Kennedy connector would connect the vehicular traffic that way, and then also coming off and moving around uh, 71 more to get into the site. So this becomes a critical vehicular uh, junction. And then again, mentioning the upgraded bus system, um, we want to propose a transit stop right along Madison in front of uh, Crossroads Church, or where Crossroads is now. Um, access to have people access the site um, that way as well. Um, we also looked at, um, aside from bus and vehicular pedestrian connectivity, and currently um, with this rail line coming through, uh, connecting to the building just south of the site is a major problem. Um, there really isn't any pedestrian connectivity that exists. So each one of these nodes is really an important connection um, for pedestrians from Oakley to migrate up into the site. So we want to connect each one of those. And one of the ways we're going to do that is um, as the industry has been declining, Nicole mentioned that we have these sites that are in disuse. Well, the rail is already linking all these sites, and as the industry declines, the rail use declines. So one of our main components also is this rail the trail um, component, which is diagrammed here which actually comes out and moves up around through the site. This is our site here. Um, so largely this, this uh, rail and trail component would now become a pedestrian and uh, bicycle pathway uh, that runs through the site and along with other industrial sites that are uh, present in the city. So that allows us to bridge um, pedestrian connections here from Oakley to the site. So that was one of the, the main things that we were looking at as well. Um, and then two of the, two of the, uh, two of the things we looked at, um, one of them was, uh, two of the precedents we looked at was uh, a BRT system that they used in Cleveland. And uh, there's been a lot of uh, development and growth that has, they just finished a project, and there's been a lot of proposed projects um, all along the corridor as a result of the system being installed because they have dedicated bus lanes and uh, the service um, has improved greatly and the ridership numbers have improved greatly <laughs> and so, uh, so that was one of the precedents we looked at the BRT system and then the other precedent was a, um, a rail to trail conversion in Minneapolis and it was along the five and a half mile stretch of uh, old railroad corridor and um, essentially it provides a barrier free um, bicycling path and uh, you know, basically a safe travel environment, um, safe travel network for pedestrians to use without the fear of, um, you know, vehicular obstacles uh, popping up. I mean, because the railroad already has right of way established, so simply converting it into a trail um, as it's being, as the use is being declined is really a logical thing to do. Um, there's also a plan with the Greenway. Um, they actually are planning to put in a uh, an express rail, light rail service alongside the trail. So there's even a possibility that if the rail doesn't completely decline and shut off, that there's still um, enough width there that there could be a trail next to the uh, declining rail service as you know, we begin to phase this project out. Um, that's basically it for transportation.